Hello. So on Twitter, the Academy account, as in the Academy Awards, are doing a thing called May Movie Madness. So basically every day in May, they're asking a different question about movies that you like. And I thought I could do that on a video and just like talk about some of my favorite movies. I'm not gonna do the whole month because it's still the middle of May. Well, the 22nd. So I'm gonna do like the first half and then I can do the next half in a bit. Probably after May's finished. I'll like list all the questions in the description as well in case you wanna play along and think about your favorite movies. First up, what's a movie you like with a number in the title? It's really easy to think of a lot of good movies with numbers in the title. Here's a few of the ones I like. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, 10 Cloverfield Lane, I think is like a genius movie. <laughs> Way better than any of the other Cloverfield movies. Oh, and uh, Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. I think that film's really good. Well worth a look if you want to have a gross time. Number two, tell us a movie you like with a colour in the title. So this one was quite hard. I could think of quite a few movies with colours in the title, but I just haven't seen them. It probably counts. Dear White People. White is a colour, I suppose. I mean, it's like the absence of colour, but it counts, I think. I think the movie's really good. I haven't seen the TV series on Netflix, but I've heard that's good as well. I think the movie does a really good job of kind of showing the effects of racism to a general audience. Like, I'm a white guy, I've not experienced racism, but the movie helped paint a good picture of it. Number three, tell us what your favorite romantic comedy is. Okay, this is super easy for me. It's The Big Sick. It came out last year. It's just amazing. I love this movie. <laughs> All the performances are great. It's incredibly sweet. Everyone's really likable. And like, it's a really interesting concept. It's based on a true story, how uh, Kumail Nanjiani's future wife, they like dated through it, then they broke up, then she went into a coma and he had to go to the hospital to like look out for her. He realized that he loved her again. It's just incredibly sweet, incredibly well done. Favorite rom-com, easy, like no doubt. Day four, in honor of May the 4th, Tell us what your favorite Star Wars movie is. I, I kind of flip between two of them, but on this particular day, I'm gonna say episode four, A New Hope. It's the first one, it's the most complete movie on its own. Like if I had to watch one Star Wars movie, I would just pick this every time. Of course, the other one's Empire. It's really good, but if you watch Empire, you then have to watch Return of the Jedi. And like, it's a fine movie, it's just like, doesn't hold up as well as the other two. Third place of The Last Jedi. If you hate The Last Jedi, like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm kidding, you're allowed to not like movies. Day five. Tell us a movie you like that needs to be played loud. I suppose this implies movies that are musicals or feature music quite heavily. So I'm gonna say Baby Driver. The action sequences to the music are really well done. I think Edgar Wright is just a genius director. I love all his movies. Played loud. Yeah, like, Baby Drive is great. I love it. <laughs> Day six. What is your favorite teen movie? The phrasing teen movie immediately makes me think of like John Hughes films like Breakfast Club and uh, Sixteen Candles and whatever. I think Breakfast Club is a great movie. Spider-Man Homecoming. It's like predominantly teenage cast. Yeah, it's basically just a high school comedy with superhero paint on it, and I really love it. I think Spider-Man Homecoming's great, so I'm gonna say that. Day seven, what is your favorite movie to watch on a plane? Uh, this is a really weird question, and especially for me. I've been on planes twice, and it was going to and from a location, and it wasn't a trip that was long enough to watch a movie on. So I'm just gonna name some plane movies that I like. I think Airplane is aged not great, but it's still got some funny moments in it. And Snakes on a Plane <laughs> is incredibly goofy, but it's still quite a fun time and like worth watching, maybe. <laughs> you already know if you're gonna like Snakes on a Plane. It's incredibly dumb. Day eight, what is your favorite documentary? So I don't often watch documentary movies, but my favorite documentary 
series was uh, Planet Earth on BBC with David Attenborough, especially Planet Earth 2, the one that was last year, or the year before that. I thought that was really good. Some incredibly tense scenes, like you forget for a moment that it's a documentary and it's just like, this, this could be a work of fiction, it's great. Oh wait, I thought of another documentary. Jiro Dreams of Sushi is a, is a really good documentary. And it's just all about this guy who's been making sushi his whole life. And he's got like the highest amount of Michelin stars or something. And he's, he just makes incredibly simple but well done sushi. And it's, it's a really sweet documentary. Uh, I'd recommend that as well. That's on Netflix. Day 9. What is your favourite guilty pleasure movie? This is weird, like, I don't feel particularly guilty about watching any movie that I like. I'm gonna say Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I mean, it's technically a kid's movie, but it's got, like, some really goofy humour. It was way better than I ever expected it to be, and I could watch that movie a lot. It, it's really good for what it is. Day 10, what is your favourite scary movie? I do like quite a few scary movies. The Thing is definitely up there by John Carpenter with Kurt Russell in it. I think that movie is great. Incredibly tense the whole way through. Yeah, it's aged very well as well. That movie is great. But I think my actual answer is going to be Get Out. It only came out last year, but I think that movie is genius and it does a really good job of balancing like the comedy and horror elements. While it's a scary movie, I never felt like I'm too scared, I need to stop watching it. I was, it really drew me in. So I think, get out, my favourite scary movie. Day 11, name a movie you never get tired of. So I'm gonna chuck a couple out here. Mad Max Fury Road, I could watch that movie just like so many times. The action is great, it's beautiful to look at. All the performances are amazing and just like the world building is like crazy good. I love the post-apocalyptic look it's got to it. But also, any Edgar Wright movie, particularly Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, I think I could watch that movie maybe like once a day. If there was an extra two hours in a day, I could easily fill that time watching Scott Pilgrim. Day 12, what is your favorite animated movie? It would be really easy to just like check out a Pixar or a, or a Disney movie. My favorite Disney movie is The Emperor's New Groove. I think that movie's hilarious every time I watch it. But my favorite Pixar movie is WALL-E. It does such a good job telling a story without having characters talk for like half the movie. But I'm gonna give a special shout out to some of my stop motion faves because it's my favorite form of animation. I think Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Wear of it is hilarious every time I watch it. Kubo and the Two Strings which came out a couple of years ago is like the most beautifully animated movie I've ever seen. Story-wise it's it's kind of generic but just like the way it looks is incredible. Day 13. Name a movie you like to watch with your mum. Oh, this is really sweet. I don't watch a whole lot of movies with my mum. We don't have a lot of overlapping movies that we enjoy, but one I do remember watching with her. Uh, she's a big fan of the royal family, like the Queen's family, not the sitcom. And I remember we watched The King's Speech together with Colin Firth, and that movie is great. So that's a movie I like to watch with my mum. Name a movie you like from the 70s. And I have to look up look up what movies came out in the 70s. I've already mentioned Alien, but that's probably up there with my favourite films ever. Uh, I think that movie's great. Also, Rocky. That's a movie that still holds up today. And I'm not a big fan of boxing in general, or sports movies, but Rocky is like the best one. Just like, I don't even need to see half of them, because Rocky's just so good. And Carrie is a 70s movie. I think that movie's great. I've not read the book or anything, but all the performances in the movie are really good. Still manages to be, like, scary, and that movie came out 40 years ago now. And finishing off this half, Day 15, what is your favourite remake of a film? I've not really watched a whole lot of remakes because 
they're usually bad, but the thing, which I've already said I liked, is actually a remake of a movie that came out earlier, so that's gonna be up there. But, also, The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser, that movie is a lot of fun, and it does a remake in an interesting way, where it takes the original idea and kind of keeps the same premise, but it's got a completely different tone that kind of justifies its existence. Like, if you just make a shot-for-shot -shot remake of a movie, what's the point in making it? That movie's already been done. So taking the original movie and then doing something interesting with it, putting your own spin on it, is something that this movie does really well. The CGI is kind of goofy uh, when you watch it today, but that movie stands up alright. It's quite fun. It's nice seeing Brendan Fraser. I miss him. Do you remember George of the Jungle? That movie was great. That's the first 15 days of this May movie madness thing. Hold on until the end of May, and I'll do the other 15. I had quite, quite a good time trying to think about what movies I like. If you want, chuck what you think down in the comments. What movies do you like watching with your mum? That question was really hard to answer. <laughs> See you later. Bye!